lots of good videos posted this morning, but um, I gotta get finished with my currently reading so I can get started on my Reading Rush TBR. The Angry Bird is back. <laughs> Pico! Pico de Gallo! never gets old. That's my guy. That's my guy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's one tough birdie. That was a most excellent read. Now on to the next one. Okay. Gotta do some waiting, TT. While listening to Tin Man. better. I mean, you might not notice the difference, but I do. Good morning, Glory. Okay, that was really beautiful. One more to go before I can start the reading rush. This is going to require some Cheerios. I didn't love it all the way through, but it definitely came together in the end. Okay, now, now I can go get ready for Reading Rush. All right, so I'm at 17 books for the month. Pretty decent. I mean, it is the 22nd, so I am behind, but I'm catching up. I made a list of the books that I'm reading this week for Reading Rush and page count per day and bonus things I need to do and I need to put that in here. My cat's getting colored in. I planned out my videos for the rest of the month. That is insane. And here are my books. I had a TBR but I've added a couple. I forgot to put in um, Happiness because I need to finish that for the booktube prize. And then I'm reading Terrific Mother with um, Sean, the book maniac, who is daily vlogging. Okay, let's talk. How am I supposed to keep up with everything that I'm supposed to do this week and get caught up on all the things that I haven't done yet this summer? When Sean and Natalie are daily vlogging, and who else? Who else is daily vlogging? Because they posted early because they're a day ahead of the rest of us. <gasps> you guys, it's going to be a great week on BookTube. But I've got to read all the books too and like make all the videos and catch up on all my comments. And yeah. Oh, well, at least I don't have to work, right? Except tomorrow. Tomorrow I do have my department, ESL department, our planning, yearly planning meeting. So there's that, but I think I can do it and enjoy all this fabulous content. Pardon me while I go sticker shopping. Oh yeah, I think that's perfect for this week. Okay, here's my little checkoff list for pages this week. The numbers here correspond to the names of the books. And we have little boxes for Monday through Sunday. So yeah, if it has a box, I'm supposed to read from that book that day. I have a plan. And I have a little agenda for things we're gonna do this week. And I'm working on filling that in and now, I'm going to go read in my designated place. And I'm going to read this book, the whole book in that one spot in my reading chair. Let's go. It's an excellent title. This is George Taki's uh, memoir about his early years when he was in the internment camp with his family. It just came out last week. I've been looking forward to it. Oh. So nice. The mailman came and the cats didn't even bother to get out of his way. <laughs> They're so nosy. <laughs> oh my 
good. I'm really enjoying this already, how it incorporates um, his early years going to the camp and then him in modern times, TED Talks, and then flashbacks to um, Star Trek and what that meant on a global scale. And then his parents' early years and then flash forward again to... Pearl Harbor and where it all started for this story. It's really good the way it jumps around but makes so much sense. Rain on that side. Some rain on that side. April in the middle. A new record. So I finished the prompt to read a book in the same place the entire time. I read it in my favorite reading chair here and that was They Called Us In A Bee. Enemy by George Tacky. This was so good. Oh, it oh, reminded wow. me of um, March by the Lewis um, civil rights graphic novels. So, yes, highly, highly recommend. Yeah. The stack. As yeah. And as companion reading, I would recommend these little short novellas boot in the attic and the when the emperor was divine this one is um about a family that went in the concentration camps and this one is just like a conglomeration of women's voices told kind of in a greek greek chorus style of what it was to be a woman a japanese woman in the united states during that time period so yeah these are really good and would go well with that graphic novel. And now I'm gonna get started on the one I was planning to read last year. Oh. To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. Finally. All right, we have to have a moment here while I'm getting ready to go to work and preparing my lunch. Um, store brand tuna, star kissed tuna. They're being sneaky because these cans weigh five ounces, but this one is three ounces drained and this one is four ounces drained so we have that to talk about uh sneaky sneaky but then look at this i only know this because i had to open two cans one for the cats and one for me because you can't live in a house with cats and open tuna in front of them uh anyway but explain the calories to me this one the whole can drained is 90 calories no. Yeah, serving size one can drain 90 calories. How is this one three? Okay, it's the whole can. But it's still more calories. This must be higher grade tuna or something. I don't know, but I'm buying Starkiss from now on. Sneaky butt. Sneaky, sneaky butt. I think they're lying. This can has five ounces in it, undrained, okay, with the water in it. And it says about two servings, and a serving size is three ounces. So I'm assuming they mean three ounces and two ounces. Like, when you drain the water off of this, if there was five ounces in it to begin with, when you drained all that water, there was only three ounces left. So they're flat out lying there. Man, I might need to get a scale. <laughs> They're cheaters. Mama's gotta work, the kids gotta work. That's the rule, guy. Hey guys, sorry for the tuna rant, but I'm a bit disturbed by this situation. I feel a science experiment coming on. Anyway, <laughs> I did start The Lighthouse uh, by Virginia Woolf last night, and I'm only like, I'm 22 pages in and I'm finding it a little difficult to get into. We shall see. Um, I have uh, Happiness by Amanata Forna on ebook. So maybe I will get a few moments with this today. Can't talk about it though because it's a book two prize. And I started A Kind of Freedom by Margaret Wilkerson Sexton uh, yesterday. This one is my audiobook. And interestingly, um, this is um, 
talking about racism, Jim Crow South, starting like right before, after, at the height of World War II, uh, and then later on in the 80s in Louisiana. So, uh, with the Creole area region of Louisiana. And it's really interesting thus far. It, it's, um, I'm really loving it right now because it's a really sweet timeline story with um, a young couple meeting and getting to know each other. And it's reading kind of like an old classic, you know, real sheltered kind of feel to it. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to end up liking it because... You know, in the 80s, um, we've got marijuana and all kinds of jazz, so it's not going to stay sheltered. Um, so, yeah. I'll keep you posted. And ironically, I was listening to this and then um, Meet Cute, which is another contemporary romance that I had on hold, came up from the library and I was going to listen to that while I was on the treadmill because I thought it would just, you know, be a better treadmill read. Um, but I ended up DNFing that one too. Like, they were just having some, like, minorly crass conversations at the beginning. And I wasn't amused. Like, it, it was a little too blatantly crass and, you know, it needed to be a little more innuendo based, in my opinion. Um, but then the, one of the lawyers was taking a case about, um, foster care and adoption and yeah, I just wasn't sure that they were going to handle the biological mom situation in a fair manner. It seemed pretty one-sided from the bit that I listened to, so I DNF'd another contemporary romance at 2%. Maybe I got to 4% on that one. Or 7%. I don't know. It was 30 minutes. But, yeah. So I went back to this one and really enjoyed it on the treadmill. But hopefully it will maintain the pace for me. Anyway, I gotta go to work. Ah! We're having our ESL team meeting today. And then, you know, I have off... Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the weekend, and then I gotta go back to work for real on Monday. Bye. Good morning, Glory. Hey, friend. Haters gonna hate, but look at you. You keep rising to the top. Way to go with the Booker long list. Hoorah! You see that? I didn't quite finish. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. What the bleep is that? What happened? Some kind of bug on the door. Oh my gosh. Ugh. I wonder if that's a mantis. Whatever it is, it's gotta go outside. There's some kind of funkiness. Something wicked this way comes. I need to wash my windows. Actually, Gabriel needs to wash my windows. Oh my god, that's creepy. Oh. There's another beastie. He needs to come in the house. It's getting late. Let's, let's do this, people. I'm out walking because the weather is stunning and I need to get my Fitbit to turn green. And I'm in my Christmas pajamas with kitties because I just don't care. But I do care about the 4th of July toenails. Those need to go. Anyway. Donkey. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> is it a cow? What in the world? I'm in the country, man. It's everything. Look at that sky though. Seriously, the sky is so beautiful tonight. How cozy do I feel right now? Okay, I finished another one. It's not on my Reading Rush TBR, but it was my last booktube prize read. I can't talk about it yet, but tomorrow, not tomorrow, 
day after, the 26th of July. That's the day. Can't wait. How's your day going, guy? Feeling good about it? Psst. All right, I feel like I have to pop in and talk about this book real quick. Um, I mentioned the first little bit being just so sweet and cozy like a classic from, you know, the 1940s, because it's set in the 40s, and <sighs> by the time I got to, it's multi-generational, so the next generation section was, it was okay, I didn't, like, I didn't love it the way I did the first part, and then the third generation, I just read about the boy getting out of prison and going to have sex with the girl he's been talking to. Um, while in prison, before going home to see his mother. You know how I feel about, you know, your mother. Or the girl who he impregnated prior to prison. And the sex scene was just, and the fight with the, yeah, was just a little more than I was ready for. I feel like I have whiplash. So, um, and I feel like all of those things are probably important to the narrative. Um, but it's such a short book. It's like barely over 200 pages. So I feel like all of these things have happened without um, a solid undergirding of the personalities and motives. So I'm just left with whiplash to be quite honest. So I went and read, I've, I read like the first 85 pages and then I went and read maybe the last 15 to feel, you know, satisfied with <laughs> knowing how those sweet characters from the, in, the beginning ended up. And yeah, I'm just going to move on now. But I wanted to touch base in this video since I gushed about it at the beginning. It's a little more meh than I initially thought. Okay, so let's go figure out what's next. Do you know what's next for me? What? I'm going to go to the bathroom, get some coffee, and play video games. Okay, I'm having trouble connecting with this one, so Sean suggested I try an audio version that he suggested and I need to read all of these in the next um what's today Thursday one two three four days so uh, <laughs> I better get busy let me take them into the to the reading chair with me and get started oh oh I need to get some bookmarks Ooh. One, two, three. Oh, I don't need a snowman. Three. Ooh, that's not done. Three, four. What do I need? Five. I need one more. Five. That's good advice today, guys. Why am I so super productive one day and so like completely unproductive the next why is that where do I lose my momentum in the night when I'm sleeping it's so frustrating maybe putting bookmarks in these books will motivate me yo top fragger do, do, do. oh yeah and so huh that's I pretty naughty let's do this yeah so i flipped through this one i um read the prologue which was nice talking about the author margalee shutterly shutterly's early years and her dad working at nasa and how she got involved in this story and I really enjoyed looking at the pictures. There's a lot of pictures in this one. But otherwise, it's really um, just 
a much more streamlined and simplified version of the original that I read a couple years ago. So, I mean, I obviously prefer this one at <laughs> my age. Uh, this one is much more involved in their lives and in the sciences and maths involved in the story. But if you're wanting a more streamlined version, I would recommend this one as well. This one's actually written on an eighth grade level. Um, but I got it. It's one of those I got from my elementary to read over the summer and just check out the stack from that um, fourth and fifth grade library club. So, yeah. Here we go. On to the next one. Disregard that. Pretend you didn't see it. I think I will, uh, since I'm on nonfiction, I will read an essay in here next. Wow, I really need to look up this variety. I've never had one in my garden before. I think they're called like a pipeline maybe? I gotta look it up. Our children will never come to cherish the natural world unless they get to experience it firsthand, close up, on a regular basis. They cannot grow to love something that they do not know. If they have never been lucky enough to visit a wildflower meadow in late spring to smell the flowers, hear the bird and insect song, and watch the butterflies flit amongst the grass, they probably won't care much if one is destroyed. Okay guys, I'm going to start. Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey. Now this is my very last Jane Austen to read for the very first time. I think I have a good feeling about this. I'm just going to spend the rest of the evening reading it and we'll see how far I get by morning. And I'm going to end this vlog here and start reading Rush Part 2 tomorrow. So stay tuned and I will chat with you soon. Bye.